right. One of the other big ideas from Unit 5 um, deals with principles that relate to taxation. And one of the big problems that people have in really assessing the validity of a tax is looking at whether or not it's fair. The average inclination is to say, if I have to pay it, it's unfair. But if you break it down, there are two guidelines that you really ought to consider when trying to judge an issue like fairness. The first one is ability to pay. In other words, if you're able to pay a tax, if it's not burdensome to you, then it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. You have to combine that with the second principle, which for most people is going to be a lot more important. And that one is benefits received. Benefits received. Now, if you're paying a tax, but you're not getting any benefit from the tax, then that gives you a little bit more of a basis for saying, hey, that tax is unfair, than if you just don't want to pay it. Now, let me give you some examples here. The gas tax. The tax that you pay when you go to buy gas. Now, you think, okay, there's the price that's on the pump, and that's what I pay. There is a tax built into that price. It's included in the price that you actually see on the signs and on the pump when you drive up to the gas station. You pay a tax on gas. Now, your ability to pay is essentially determined by your willingness to pull up to a particular gas pump and say, okay, this price is all right with me. I'm going to buy gas here. Now, what benefit do you get from that? The gas tax is going to be used for road repairs. If you're driving a car, you drive it to the gas station, then you're driving it on a road. And if you're paying for the roads to be repaired when they get damaged, then you, the driver of the, ve of the vehicle, benefit from that. So with the gas tax, it meets both of these requirements. We would say that that tax is fair. Okay, It's a lot more fair than others. Now, there are other ways of looking at taxes, however. These are kind of our big overriding umbrella principles. So if we look at this in terms of tax categories, the first one that we're going to look at is progressive. By and large, the income tax system used in the United States is a progressive system. What that means is, as your income increases, the percentage that you pay to the tax increases. And vice versa. As you make less money, you would pay a lower percentage of your income in income tax. Progressive probably doesn't sound that bad. Maybe. The second type is proportional. A proportional tax, or you may see this described as a flat tax, a traditional flat tax, takes away the need for all of the tax loopholes and the whole tax prep industry would go away and all the tax prep software. Because a proportional tax system would mean that regardless of your income, whether it's higher or lower or it changes or whatever, everybody pays the same percentage. So if the income tax rate is 15%, then you get your W-2s in the mail, and you cut a check to the government for 15%, you're done. There's nothing else that you need to do. Okay? We don't have that system. So we have progressive and we have proportional. Then we have the third one. This is the last category we're going to look at. You really only have three options here if you're looking at a tax in terms of the percentage of your income that you actually pay to the tax. The third type is regressive. Now, if a progressive system means as your income increases, you pay more, then a regressive system means as your income increases, then the percentage you pay to the tax drops. 
The inverse of that is also true. As your income is less, the percent you pay for the tax is higher. This is where the tax system gets a little bit tricky for me. I'm not crazy about progressive taxes. In fact, most of the taxes that people end up paying, especially the taxes that you pay on a daily basis, are going to be regressive. Now, you look at it and you go, but everybody pays the same percentage in sales tax and everybody pays the same you know, add-on to the price for gas tax, so how could it be regressive if everybody pays the same percentage? It don't work like that. Let me give you an example. To determine which category of tax actually falls into, you have to look at it in terms of what percentage of a person's income is actually going to pay the tax. So if we pull our two typical consumers, Fred and Bob, they get used a lot. Let's say Fred takes home about 400 bucks a week and Bob takes home about 1,000. Now, they go to the grocery store and they both spend 100 bucks on groceries and let's say they're paying 5% tax. So they're each paying $5 in sales tax. And you go, well, wait a minute. If they're both paying exactly the same amount, then how is that not fair? Well, we have to look at it not in terms of the dollar amount, but what that actually translates into as a percentage of the income that they're both making. As a percentage, five bucks is 1.25% of $400. For Bob, five bucks is 0.5% of $1,000. Oh, but now it gets a little different because yeah, they're paying the same $5, but for Fred, it's 1.25% of his income. That's a lot higher than half a percent. That's what we mean by a regressive tax. Anytime a tax asks people to pay the same amount of money, and most of the taxes that you pay on a daily basis are going to be regressive. Sales tax, gas tax, cigarette tax, um, a lot of government fees that you have to pay. Some states are trying to require people to have a driver's license when they go vote. Essentially, you're putting a regressive tax on voting, which kind of sucks. This is how we determine what category to put a tax in. Lower income, higher percent. Sales tax is regressive. 